Hello, my name is Ray Salazar, and this is Morning Real, a three to four to a minute or a hundred minute or so podcast of films that I review of all nations of all kinds, from the new to the old, from what sucks, what's great, what was shot on a $50,000 camera to a $4,000 camera. Yes, it's happened recently, but I'm not about to talk about that film. Today, I'm here to talk about The Exorcist Believer. Dude, me and my wife saw this film just now. Came out on Friday, October 6, 2023. Man, I don't know who directed this film. I was going in this film blind. I saw the trailer once and I was like, all right, you know what? I might not like it, but my wife like might like it because she saw the trailer with me. And she was like, let's go see it. I was like, all right. The time came and the time was now. The time was today. And here we are talking about it. This film was directed by David Gordon Green. David Gordon Green, dude, who's been involved with projects such as Eastbound and Down. He did the film All the Real Girls, which is one of my favorite indie romantic comedies, I guess. I I would take it more as a dramedy than a comedy. But he directed that film. He directed George Washington. These are like indie projects that like try to be very artistic in the early period of his career. But... You can sort of see that. And when you watch this film, The Exorcist Believer, I was just watching a film where it's chaotic and sweet, sometimes at the same time. And you see moments of clarity. You see moments of hope. And you're watching it, and there's actually no dialogue going at at that time. And you're like, damn, man, like, this is very clarifying. This is very relieving. And then, boom, it goes right into the action again and again. But... Looking at certain visuals of hope, seeing colors of light, bright colors, and it just reminded me of of David Gordon Green in some weird way. And the day when I saw his his name at the end credits, I was just like, whoa, man, I can't believe he directed this film. How Times Have Changed. Screenplay by Peter Sadler and David Gordon Green. Whoa. Story by Scott Teams, Danny McBride. What? Danny McBride. Righteous Gemstones. Come on, dude. Story by David Gordon Green as well. Based on the characters by Will and Peter Blatty. Produced by Jason Blum, David C. Robinson, and James G. Robinson. Starring Leslie Odom Jr. and Dowd, Jennifer Nettles, Norbert Leo Butts, Lydia Jewett, Olivia Markham, and Ellen Burstyn. We all know Ellen Burstyn playing the OG mom. From the first Exorcist film. And we see her at her old age. Oh my god dude. She's so freaking old. I can't believe they had her acting. In the, I dude this movie is crazy dude. This movie is just like. What you would think. Would not happen. Happened. They brought an OG back. And they just put her into acting. And, and it looks like. I don't know man. Like if she needed some time to finesse. Like even the way she walks. She, like you can tell by the way she walks. Come on dude. Like. She shouldn't be acting. She should just be retiring, living large, just like the way she's been doing since the 60s. And it sucks for her, too. Like, she goes through it, man. Again, she goes goes through it pretty damn hard. And it's almost not fair. But then at the same time, she kind of chose this, you know. And she led on to go on doing bigger things with her career in the film. It's just kind of sad that, like, when you put an OG character like that and you're kind of, like, sort of writing her off again in a weird way. But then again, you know, like, maybe that's what she wanted, man. So this one was very, very simple, man. Like, this, like, this black family, man, they're in Haiti. They're out in a, like, sort of like a work vacation type of thing. The, The girl's pregnant. And she sort of goes to this, like, small, like, village and this this one kid just like pulls her aside like hey man like like, let's let's just go dude let's go let me take you somewhere and this woman just goes like not a care in the world thinking she's all right you know she goes and next thing you know she's doing this like she's a part of this ritual and it's it's a very like from what it seems a very native ritual even like in the scent of like haitians you know it happens years go by the kid grows up. Oh, let me tell you, there's an earthquake that happens. And we all know about the earthquake in Haiti, right? One among, like, many owners that happened even bef- after that. So the mom doesn't make it. 
child lives. We won't tell. We won't get into that. I'm not gonna spoil anything. This, these are no spoilers. You know, it's crazy. I didn't expect this film to be this type of film where like it's very, very family based. You know, I, th I mean, most of the Exorcist films are very family based, but like this gets pretty deep. Where like kids get lost, parents are going crazy, like fucking throwing trash cans everywhere because their child's not found. But there's like nothing that you can really do about it. But like. You learn about unity, people unite, people get together, they put all kinds of differences aside, they put their racial differences aside, and it's there, dude, you know, and it's real, that's what I like about it, it's, it gets kind of real about it, like, when I saw Jennifer's body, which I'm not gonna get into it, like, man, all those characters are retarded, dude, I'm sorry, they just, like, like, I don't know what kind of reality they live in, but Diablo Cody... You gotta you gotta write them a little bit better. Anyway, back to the Exorcist believer. Gets crazy with this family, man. These families unite. Their ch their children are just like, just infected by the devil. They got into the woods after a school day, and they just decided, you know, let's get lost together. They get lost. They go into this like deep dark place that looks just dirty and abandoned, which is, should just be left dirty and abandoned, right? But they decide to play fire with fire. And unbeknownst to the to one of them, she's already got something in her where like once you do like a little type of seance, no matter how weak it is, you're you already lit the match, dude. The match is lit. And the next thing you know, full on devil stuff. Overall, this film gets pretty good and at the same time it just falls off. It's like a roller coaster, but like in like quality, you know. Like the suspense is always there, it's great. You see these people, like, I believe how they would react to situations like getting their kids to the ER, seeing how they look like after, like, being three days lost, thinking that they've been lost for, like, five hours. Like, what kind of crap is that, right? You can, like, clearly tell something's, you know, something's very, very off. And you know what? This this film kind of spoon feeds you a little bit because we see these characters, we see how they act, and even though the parents don't really see what we see, it's like, man, you're you're kind of ruining it in a little bit but like it's kind of what we expect out of a film franchise such as the exorcist now honestly i gotta give this film two out of four tokes but i did enjoy the film it made me laugh at some parts yes there's some it's not that it's meant to be funny you know but there's just some stuff that you see that's like if you understand the psyche of daniel mcbride and david gordon green from a comedy point of view these guys are fucking hilarious, man. And they're going to kind of put some comedy darts in that script, you know. And when they hit you, they hit you. And they hit me pretty good, you know. Being that it's a David Gordon Green film, I should have expected things like that. And he delivered. But, I mean, he knew that he was trying to make a film that's a little bit over the top. Even for something like this. Like, these kids get possessed, dude. And it's crazy. They be throwing up black blood. They look... They just look like they've been through hell, you know, you know, in the flesh, you know, and, you know, what, well, how much more can you do, es especially what we've seen, you know, that kind of goes before this film, like other Exorcist films, other Conjuring films, you know, shit like that, you know, we've seen, we've, we've almost seen it all, like, what can this film do different? This film was a little different. I didn't expect, like, to see this type of, like, dynamic of two different types of families, two different types of beliefs, but they're all there for one thing, and it's, you know, to make sure that their kid fucking makes it, man, they, that's, that's all they fucking care about, and you know, that makes them very third-dimensional characters, as far, as far as, like, the cast is concerned, pretty solid cast, I gotta give it that, man, David Gordon Green knows how to, like, put people together, man, and, like, even, like, it's the study of, like, theater and acting, like, it's kind of really hard to like people who are just stressed the fuck out all at the same time, you know, like you, you wouldn't think it would, would not work, but it does kind of work. But overall, overall, either way, cinematography, pretty freaking dope. I dig it. Like he knows how to light a scene. He knows how to make things scary and spooky. He knows how to make things seem like, like if there was no devil film existed in this film, but David Gordon Green, man, Keep on doing these films, dude. You know what? Make another sequel to this one. Or 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 step into the to the spooky culture of things, man. So yeah. Two 
and a half. Well, yeah, two and a half. Two and a half, two and a half out of four. I enjoy it. You should go see this film. It's a good date film. It's a good film to see, like, with some Pinot Noir, you know, and popcorn. And, you know, even coffee, too. It's a good wake and bake film, I'll tell you that much. My name is Ray Salazar. Not a bad script. But it, the way that some of these characters execute these scenes, everything's focused on these children, right? But there's not enough background as to, like, where this magic goes. I mean, it doesn't get very deep. It just kind of stays on the modern path of things, right? I kind of wish they went deep a little bit, you know? Like, and put some more screen time on Ellen Burstyn. Like, she has so much to offer besides, like, having her sit in an interview, you know? That's, like, all the context that we need. Sure, it gives us a good background. But at the same time, let's just go deep, man. I wish the priest hadn't died like that. Like, it was so easy to write that character off, man. Like... That sucks. Why they gotta sacrifice him, man? And then it's funny how they put this film where, like, you gotta choose one or the other type of thing. Where, like, you know, if, if you kind of know how spiritualism works, like, that's just the devil tempting you. That's the devil trying to get you, playing tricks on you. And unfortunately, fucking shit happens. Follow me at Morning Shot Films. You know, stay positive. You know, believe in your higher power. Go in with faith. Follow me on Morning Shot Films IG and YouTube. Check out my website, morningshotfilms.co. Thank you.